There is power behind every story we carry within. Every tragedy, no, yes, laugh, victory. In every testimony that is incubated within our souls have power. The power to transform from tragedy to crown, from obstacle to opportunity, and all the moments in between make us wiser. Watch Candid Conversations with Teresa for impactful, unheard moments that will certainly spark your power and inner truth to shift, heal, and restore your life. It's time to get real, uncover, unlock, unpack, set free, and increase the dialogue to change a life. We all start somewhere and end in places of destiny. Get ready for the long-awaited Candid Conversations with Teresa. So how do we clear the clutter in order to get to purpose? I think we need to first look at define clutter and what, cl and what clutter can be because you just mentioned, you know, whether it's clutter of the home or clutter of the mind. And there's so much clutter of the mind going on. Like I think about the fact that I had to declutter when everything happened in my life in 2014. I think there's so many people that are now having to declutter post-pandemic, post-COVID-19, um, like there is this decluttering or this cluttering that, that, that has happened. And when you even think about us as adults, there's so much clutter that we have accumulated over the course of our lives, experiences, things that people have told us, whether it's our parents, or our teachers, like there's so much things that I have learned over the years that I've actually had to kind of get rid of if I want to rethink my thinking or renew my mind to get from now one level of success to the other or just one level of maturity to the, uh, to, 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 to the other. There was this time, I mean, there was so much times when there was a certain level of clutter that I had when my parents is very much present. And then with them not being here, in order for me to be able to do what I have to do to handle this new mantle, to handle this new um, level of work, to handle this new assignment, I had to get rid of what was there before, the old stuff, the clutter of they're supposed to be here, the clutter of we're supposed to do this together, the clutter of your dad will always be here to pick, up, to pick you up if something happens or if something falls, like that's clutter to me. And you know, there's so many people that's looking for relief and they wonder why they can't get it. There's so, like I was looking for clarity and I couldn't get it. I was looking for a better life. Many people are looking for a better life and they're wondering, man, why can't I get this, uh, this, this relief and this better life that I'm looking? And they're not first looking, they're looking at how can I get it from the outside versus how can we get it from the inside? And what can I do? And you know, there's clutter at home but there's also clutter in the mind, there is clutter at work, and all of those require, if nothing else, the first thing we have to do is start. Start to figure out how do I rethink my thinking? How do I get rid of these millions of shoes that I have that I don't wear anymore? How do I declutter my home? How do I declutter my relationships? All you have to do is first start. And then once you start, start small. Don't throw all million shoes out one time. Don't try to get rid of all the thinking that you've been thinking, all the thoughts and beliefs and values that you've had and accumulated for the last 40 years of your life. Don't try and do it all at once. That's how relapse happens. And then I think about there's accumulation of clutter, but there's also this acute onset of clutter that has happened in a, in a, in a pandemic like this, for instance, that we've been in for 24 months. Um, people who have lived clutterless lives all of a sudden have experienced clutter full lives that just kind of happen acutely. So there's that way of dealing with clutter and how do I get rid of this new onset of normalcy that I didn't have before. You start, you start small and then have the one year, what I'm gonna call the one year rule. Like when I'm decluttering my closet for instance, if I've had something for a year but I haven't seen it for a year, that means I haven't worn it, I haven't used it, I tend to get rid of it. I'm like, if I wear it all this time, two to one, it can't fit. Or next thing, it's probably gonna fall apart when I do put it on. Or it's probably out of, 
uh, a necessity for me. So what I do is I declutter by either giving it away, I throw it away, but there's a one year rule. So if you've had a thought, or if you've had a belief, or if you've had thinking that you've had from one year that in this new year, it doesn't fit, then say, you know what? I need to do without this. I need to do away with this so that I can now introduce something new. So there is also this, what I'm gonna call an in and out rule. In order for you to bring in new, you have to get rid of old. It only makes sense to get rid of old. It doesn't make sense to put new wine into old wineskins. And so you want to bring in new thinking. You want to bring in new beliefs. You want to bring in new clothes. You want to bring in new friends. Sometimes you need to make room by actually bringing in, but doing away with by pushing out. And that's some, and it's easier to say that in things and tangible things like clothes and shoes and kitchenware, but it's kind of difficult. I've found it very difficult to do it when it comes to, you know, the way I've, I'm, I'm, the way you think and the way you've been brainwashed or trained for 30, 40, 50, 60 plus years. That's why it's so hard to teach an old dog new tricks because they've been doing it for so long. They're, they're, they have these old ways. So you have to start small with these same dogs by teaching them small little new things. And then once you start small and you put this new habit in place that you put into your routine, then it now becomes something you started small, then it starts to get big, and then you're able to now do that in and out. Like if, if you go to the grocery store, you see them when they're packing, they actually don't just take new stuff from boxes and put it on the shelf. They actually take out the stuff from the shelf that are in the back and they bring that forward. And then they put all the new stuff at the back. But they all, because again, they want to be able to get rid of the old first and then start with the new. Because these things have expiration dates that are pushed back further. Pushed back further. And so in order to do in and out, in and out, um, the one the one year rule and then you want to let go of the past and That's easier said than done Holding on to the past can be one of the most clutter Full things anyone can do to hold on to all the mess they have in their mind in their life like I think about You know my parents have passed and I'm gonna get very candid here my parents have passed for seven years and for seven years, I grew up in a house for about 30 years of my life. And I have not been able to go back home because everything in that home, no matter how clutterful it is, has a meaning to me. So as soon as I see it, I'm going to see them. As soon as I see them in my mind and I'm going to get emotional and then there's going to be this level of waterworks is going to happen that I don't feel like doing. But that's a clutter. And the reason why getting rid of clutter is so hard is because of the relationship that we build with it. So I have a relationship with that house that has been very, very difficult for me to get past. And so because I can't get past it, I can't even go there. That's actually stopping me from what I'm gonna call having the closure I need to further, further grieve them. And I know this, I can say this because I know this. I've, I've, I've acknowledged the fact that I have that as a hiccup in my grieving process. And I just haven't been ready. But, um, you know, I just, I, I know that, Charissa, in order for you to get to this place of relief, in order for you to get to this place of clarity, and in order for you to start living the life that you've wanted, you have to declutter that thought that it's, it's okay for you to break down when you go there. It's okay for you to to remember but sever the relationships that you have to the memories that you have there. You can still have the memories, but the relationship with them need to be something different other than these memories are gonna hold me back and I'm gonna miss them. That has been very, very difficult for me. Like that is a clutter that's going on in my mind and in my emotional space and in my heart that has been very difficult for me to deal with. But I tell you this because I know there's so many other people out there who are suffering the same way with the same thing. And exactly what I'm telling you, I'm applying to my own life. I'm trying to bring in, okay, I'm gonna put in new thoughts. I'm all, the other thing that I'm gonna try to is, you know, say hello to my family and friends. Like, I need y'all. 
do I go, will I go to, to that house by myself? No, like I'm gonna carry my aunt, I'm gonna carry my cousin, I'm gonna carry my husband. And I'm like, look, I need to go home. I don't wanna go home, can y'all go with me? Because I know that I'm gonna have that moment, but that's okay. At least I can say, you know what, let's do this together. Let's, let's declutter together. Like for instance, when I'm getting rid of old clothes and shoes, I get someone to help me. I'm like, do you need this? Let's, let, let's tackle one room at a time. Like I remember my godchild helped me went through a whole lot of boxes and I was able to declutter and do away with and get rid of stuff with with the help in a faster time than I would if it was by myself. So engage and engage your family and friends in helping you declutter with new thinking, new ways of doing things. So I'm going to grab them and one of these days I'm going to say, okay, can you all go with me? And I'm going to be okay with, I need to declutter. I need to do this small. Maybe we just go for 30 minutes one day. Let me walk around. Let me cry. Let me do what I need to do. And then maybe another day I'm able to go and stay longer. But if I don't start that process, you guys have no idea how much I know I need to go home. And I've told a few people that I haven't been home and they're like, oh, you need to go. I know I need to go. No, you need to go. If you don't go, it's not going to... I understand that. But I've allowed myself to have the grace and the patience to... Take, 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 take the time I need because once I declutter and get rid of, I need that process to not be traumatizing. Because now you go from trying to declutter to now dealing with the effects of trauma. And that's even worse. So don't let people rush you. Don't rush yourself, which is why I said start, but start small. So if I had to encourage someone out there who's dealing with the clutter of the mind, clutter of the physical, even clutter of the spiritual, I'm gonna tell you the very same thing that I'm gonna tell myself. I'm gonna tell you the very same thing that I'm gonna apply to my life. Allow yourself to take as long as you need to declutter. But I'm gonna encourage you, if you do nothing else, if you do nothing else that I, of, of the things I listed, start, start somewhere. I have made a promise, and I'm going to say this to you to hold me accountable. I made a promise that when I go home this Christmas, I'm going to go home. I'm going to grab my family, I'm going to grab my husband, I'm going to grab a friend, and I'm going to say, let's go. And that's going to be my start. Start somewhere. But you must declutter if you're looking for relief, if you're looking for clarity, and if you want to live your best life.